see the morning breaking through the valleys and the hills. I see the morning breaking as I go, as I go. I see the morning breaking through the valleys and the hills, and I'm going home to Jesus. Bless my soul, bless my soul. And I feel the fresh wind blowing through the valleys and the hills. I feel the fresh wind blowing as I go, as I go. Fresh wind blowing through the valleys and the hills, and I'm going home to Jesus. Bless my soul, bless my soul. And I hear the people stirring through the valleys and the hills. I hear.
We give thanks to God, our Creator, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Let us pray. O merciful Redeemer, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving grace. Grant that we may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. And be with us in our worship today through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship at Timberlake Christian Church. We're glad you're joining us either on Facebook or YouTube. Hope that you will receive a great blessing for being with us today. A few announcements this morning. I'm glad to have announcements. Uh, the first one is that uh, you may have guessed sometimes that on Sunday mornings uh, you are not actually seeing a live feed. Uh, we have been recording this service uh, on Friday mornings uh, and having an actual live service at 9 o'clock down under the picnic pavilion. So you are invited, if you're uh, local, to join us. Now the rules are the same pretty much. You need to wear masks. You need to maintain uh, physical distance. Uh, I, we recommend that you bring uh, your own uh, camp chair, outdoor chair, lawn chair uh, to sit in, uh, whatever you're comfortable with. And we uh, hope that you will, uh, you'll join us once in a while. Uh, we're trying to be safe. We are uh, washing everything up. Uh, before service and after service. Uh, we're using the same kind of little communion uh, kits that we, we have. Uh, and, and I'm inviting folks who have uh, good cameras to bring them or else to use your, your uh, cell phone as a camera. Take pictures of us because we want to be able to share uh, with everybody online, on our website, on Facebook, uh, the things that are going on because a lot of things continue. Last Sunday, uh, Ed Parrish reminded us all uh, during announcements that the mission of this church goes forward. And so uh, please come and be part of it. It's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting time, and I'm glad that we're, we're able to do it. The one uh, caveat in all of this is that if it's raining, we're not having service. Uh, we're not coming inside because we don't think that's the safest thing to do right now. Uh, we are not continuing with Sunday school inside or anything like that, uh, but we are, we are meeting. So if it's raining, we're not going to send an email or a text or a call or anything. Just don't worry. We're not going uh, to have worship. The other announcements this week, uh, on Monday evening, we are having uh, a continuation of our Ad Fi uh, committee meetings to get the new uh, budget ready and to get the nominations for next year uh, prepared uh, for the next board meeting. On Thursday evening, the work of the Constitution Revision Committee uh, continues. And uh, so Ad 5, as you can see on the screen, is 7 o'clock. And at 6.30 on Thursday, uh, the Constitution Review Committee. It's hard to believe that we're coming into September. Uh, it's been over six months since uh, we started uh, this strange world uh, adventure that we're having. I like to try to look at things positively whenever possible. It's frustrating, but uh, I want to go back to the, the 9 o'clock service. The last couple of weeks, we've been sending you an email uh, on Thursday. We are not going to do that anymore. So just be aware that uh, we will be having a 9 o'clock service on Sunday morning uh, for the foreseeable future. If things change radically one way or the other, then we will notify you uh, if we're moving indoors. Uh, John Hicks and I were talking a couple of days ago, and I said, John, said even if it cools off, if it was a football game, people would bring a blanket 
and go. So I'm going to be encouraging you if we get cooler temperatures, uh, hopefully soon. Uh, if you're going to be too cold, wear long pants, wear a jacket, bring a blanket. It's okay. Uh, we want you to be part of our worship service if you feel safe. And if you don't feel safe, folks, it's okay. It's okay. Stay home. Continue to do what is best for you. We love you, and God loves you no matter what. So keep that in mind. And let's move now to our prayer song. spend a moment with our prayer list. Uh, you might note a few names that uh, are new this week, uh, especially uh, Joe Thomas, who's the aunt of Stephanie Staten, Tommy Lynch, who's Jess Jesse Lynch's brother, and Wanda Mitchell, who's a friend of Lynn Maddox. Let's spend a moment in silence. Gracious and loving God, we turn to you in love, knowing that you accept us and forgive us and care for us. We come to you on our knees, figuratively and literally, to offer the prayers for this day, to ask you for 
special attention to these on our prayer list. To those who live in our hearts, who we pray for individually and as families. To pray for those we do not know here and around the world. Oh God, as good Christians, may we never become so focused on where we are that we fail to remember that you have called us into the whole world. So may our prayers reach out far beyond this place, knowing that you are capable of hearing all of our prayers all at once, that you are attentive to all these named and all the unnamed ones, and even those we do not know, even those who we don't particularly care for. May we learn, O oh God, as good Christians, to love our enemies in the same way that we love our friends. That perhaps one day, O oh God, there may be none. We ask the special prayers, as always, God, for those who are in direct line of fire for COVID-19. Those who have tested positive, those who have been around those who have tested positive. Those who do not know they have it and spread it around the world. Those who are not careful. Those who believe that their rights are more important than the rights of others. And for those of us who just sometimes don't think those who want normalcy so much that we'll do anything to get it. God, we know that these are not normal times. Turn us into people of attentiveness. Turn us into people who care. We pray for those doctors and nurses, for all those who work on the front lines, for those who risk their lives each day, not only medically, but in emergency situations. Be with them and protect them. Be with those who come into contact with the public constantly. But especially, God, be with the researchers that they may understand and conquer this dread disease. Bless us in our worship, O oh God, that we may be attentive to you and aware of your presence moving among us through your Holy Spirit. May what we do this morning bring us closer to you, give us understanding that we did not have, but more than anything else, God, help us know that we are the church, and as the church, we are always in a position of hope. May we feel that hope this day. For we ask this in all things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. As you may have noticed uh, recently, I have been uh, preaching from the Old Testament. Uh, sometimes that's a challenge. And uh, I think this morning's sermon is probably going to be more of a Sunday school lesson than it is an actual sermon. Uh, because I have to tell you some things about the prophet Jeremiah. Some that you know, some that you may not know. Uh, so bear with me this morning and hear the words of the prophet from Jeremiah 15, 15 through 21. Uh, Jeremiah is talking directly to God, doing a little bit of complaining but also God is talking back to him. You understand, Lord. Remember me and act on my behalf. Bring judgment on those who torment me. In your mercy, spare my life. Consider how I'm insulted on your account. When your words turned up, I feasted on them, and they became my joy, the delight of my heart, because I belong to you, Lord God of heavenly forces. I didn't join the festive occasions. I took no delight in them. 
I sat alone because your hand was upon me, and you had filled me with curses. Why am I always in pain? Why is my wound incurable, so far beyond? You have become for me as unreliable as a spring gone dry. Therefore the Lord proclaims, If you return to me, I will take you back and let you stand before me. If you utter what is worthwhile, not what is worthless, you will be my spokesman. They will turn to you, not you to them. I will make you a sturdy bronze wall against these people. They will attack you, but they won't triumph, because I am with you to protect and rescue you, declares the Lord. I will rescue you from the hand of the wicked. I will redeem you from the grasp of the violent. May God's people hear what the Spirit is saying in these words of scripture today. Sometimes we all feel down. Prophet Jeremiah was an interesting character. First of all, he's considered the second of the five, his book is the second of the five books of the prophets, of the great prophets, the major prophets. Uh, Although all of the prophet, prophetic books are not named for a particular prophet. We know more about Jeremiah's personal life than about any other prophet. Now, some people think that we know a lot about Hosea's life and his married life. Uh, My only comment about that is that uh, it sounds to me like Hosea's kind of creating some stuff to make a point. I'm not sure that he had an awful wife, and uh, and some uh, some of the book of Hosea is almost insulting to women. So we won't dwell on that. We're going to talk about Jeremiah. Uh, We know that uh, Jeremiah was the son of Hilkiah, who was a priest. He was of the tribe of Benjamin, and uh, that would have been in the Judean area, the southern kingdom. He is called the weeping prophet because he cries all the time about the messages he has to send, he has to give. And because of the difficulties that he deals with, today it's obvious he's crying to God. Uh, we, we know that uh, uh, he or his faithful scribe, Baruch, uh, wrote down a lot of his words. Uh, with a lot of the prophets, well, most of the prophets, we have no idea who wrote uh, these, their books for them. But we know that, that Jeremiah tells us uh, about Baruch. He was in service as a prophet for almost 40 years. He served, uh, I almost wanted to serve, he served under, he served against, in most cases, five kings, starting with Josiah. Uh, He probably, he went to, from uh, Jerusalem, he went to Babylon with uh, with the exiles. He ended up in Egypt, and we lose track of him at that point, and so most scholars think that perhaps he died at that point. We don't know for sure. His message was pretty simple and direct. He tended to preach against the kings because each of these kings in some way or another, uh, as the Bible says, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He predicted the fall of Jerusalem. Now you can imagine if hearing a preacher say, the United States is going to fall because of its sin, because of its evil. Well, you know how popular that would make, that preacher. Well, this is the kind of preacher Jeremiah was. He, was uh, he, he had to preach against the king's chosen priests and prophets. You know, nothing's changed much in the world. Uh, rulers, uh, no matter who they are, they're prime ministers, kings and queens, presidents, premiers, always have their court people who tell everybody, This is God's person. Jeremiah said, "Uh uh-uh, don't listen to him. He was against the way that, that the people of Israel, God's chosen people, the Jews, had turned from God and started worshiping 
the local Canaanite gods, especially uh, Baal, but also Moloch. Now, Moloch's kind of interesting because Moloch's worship included sacrifice of children. And we know from the story of Abraham and Isaac throughout the history and in the law itself, thou will not, shalt not sacrifice your children. It is not what God requires. And so the people of Israel had wandered, not just wandered, they had run in a straight path, straight to the local gods, moved away from God. They broke God's covenant with them. And God said, as long as you keep the covenant, I will be faithful. But when you break it, you don't get any more blessings. And so here's what Jeremiah is saying. There are going to be famines. There's going to be a foreign conquest. It means your, your kingdom is done with. You're going to be taken into captivity. And your captors are going to plunder all your wealth. You're going to be nobody. He preached against greed. He preached against false prophets. He preached against idolatry. You can imagine how much the people loved him. One of the things he complains about is that he is beaten by the false prophets, by the priests. They, they subject him to beatings. He's put in prison. The people don't want to hear him. They see him coming. Here comes Jeremiah. Oh, here comes that stupid guy, Jeremiah. Who tells us that we're going to not be the great country we've always been? All of this made for an extremely sad ministry. If you think about it, sometimes we feel that way, don't we? We feel like that we've been faithful people that we've been good people, that we're doing what God wants us to do. And I'm not even going to talk about COVID-19. Uh, although I have a couple of Old Testament uh, professor friends who, who just constantly remind me, you know what God would say, what the Old Testament would say about this whole thing? Come back to God. <laughs> Come back to God. And I would dare say that some of us have used this time to do just that. As individuals, we've done it. We've gotten closer in our walk with God, and that's a good thing. So anything that, that ultimately brings us back to God is good, no matter how awful it is as well. And it's kind of interesting. You know, I've told you a couple of times that I feel like I'd have a PhD in COVID-19 right now, especially in uh, Virginia's phase two, because uh, I don't think we should have ever left phase two personally. As soon as we got to phase three, boom, you know, the whole place blow, blew up. And same thing across the country. As soon as we let our guard down, uh, just at the time when we were settling in, things have gotten worse. And uh, I don't think they're going to get any better personally until uh, we get some kind of vaccine. So, Carry your mask in your back pocket. Put it on when people are around. We try to remember that. Don't care if it makes you uncomfortable. Dr. Fauci said a couple of weeks ago, and I think I may have mentioned this earlier uh, in, in another uh, service, that uh, when we wear our masks, social or what I call physical distancing, washing our hands, staying out of crowds that are larger than 10 indoors and uh, being careful outdoors as well, uh, said the American people will conquer this thing. Otherwise, it's going to keep going. And people, the death rate is going to continue to rise. And uh, it doesn't, we don't see any signs of it flattening unless people do these things. That's the message. That is an unpopular message. The popular message is do what you want to. We're, we're Americans and we have freedom. That's the, popular, that's the popular message. But the truth of the matter is sometimes you have to do things you don't want to do. 
This is the message that Jeremiah is giving to the people of Judah and the people of Israel. That sometimes you can't do what's popular. You can't do what you want to do. You've got to come back to God, repent, be faithful for God's blessings to return. In the midst of what is a depressing book in the Bible. And if you read the prophets, they're all pretty depressing. They're depressing for a reason. Because long ago, the Hebrew people wandering in the wilderness with Moses and Aaron at their head agreed with God that they would follow God's way. They made an agreement. They made an agreement that in many ways, because we are a daughter religion of Judaism, we also didn't have any freedom in making that decision. They made that decision for us, for all the Jews, for all time. We don't think about that. But the Old Testament scriptures which were the scriptures that Jesus had in his, in his hand and that he learned as a child and as a young person and as an adult. Jesus used those scriptures as the jumping off point for his message. Jesus' message was God loves you. But there are some things that you got to do. Faithful people are not free to do whatever they want to do. I think that last week's sermon, the scripture from Micah, simplifies things for us very well. To do justice. In other words, how we treat all people. To love kindness, which, in, which is another thing that we do. We don't just do good things, but we are kind to people. And we walk humbly with our God. It's easy to get lost. It's easy to get lost when we, when we insist on our own way. And Jeremiah keeps saying, God's way is the best. Come back. And then there are people who were saying to the people, but you're doing what God wants because we're the priests and we're the prophets and the king has appointed us so we know the king's from God. And so do what you want to do. Keep, keep worshiping Baal, keep sacrificing your children to Moloch. It's okay. We got your back. So Jeremiah goes to God and he's down. He is down because nobody's listening to him. We ministers uh, who might be tuned in and, and maybe some of the elders, Sunday school teachers, leaders in the church, all know what it's like to be dealing with stuff in such a way that you feel like people aren't hearing you. And we get down to. But the second half of this scripture gives us hope. It's easy to get down. It's easy to get depressed. It's easy to watch too much news and not spend enough time with God. The key for us who are not prophets, is to be faithful, to walk humbly with our God, to continue to do justice. Jesus said, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was in prison, I was sick, and you were there for me, doing justice. Love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Kindness, do kindness, be kind. And to walk humbly with God, to always try to hear what God might be saying in given situations, to see what gift can be unwrapped from God in every problem. As I said earlier, part of this COVID-19 gift has been for people who are faithful, instead of complaining, instead of worrying, to take some extra time to be with God. To 
to do these things will help us to hear God's message of hope. They will attack you, but they won't triumph because I'm with you to protect you and rescue you, declares the Lord. Amen.
How do you view the resurrection? Do you see it as a literal, physical rising of Jesus' body? Do you see it as a symbolic and spiritual experience that each of the disciples and each of us continue to have? I don't know the answer to that. I know what I believe. But I do know this, that Jesus knew that his disciples throughout the ages would need something tangible that they could realize Jesus is here. And so he, during his, the Last Supper, gave his bread and his cup to the disciples after blessing it. And he said, this is my body, this is my blood. They're given for you. Whenever you do this, eat the bread, drink the cup, alone with a few people or with a, a big crowd. Remember me. And the truth is that when we remember Jesus, we also remember who we are. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless this bread and bless this cup that what they are now may be changed through our faith, that we may touch Jesus and bring him inside us to live as we eat and as we drink. We ask this in his name. Amen. Jesus blessed bread and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took his cup and blessed it, gave it to them and said, drink all of this, for this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Whenever we eat and whenever we drink, we proclaim Jesus' death and his resurrection until he returns. Eat of the bread, drink of the cup. Before we end our service this morning, I would be remiss if I did not say thank you uh, to Mary and to the TCC ringers for coming in and taking part in the service. Uh, you may have noticed uh, a couple of faces you didn't recognize. Uh, Mary did uh, bring in some ringers for, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's a little bit of a pun. Uh, she brought in some folks to help out. And we appreciate so much uh, our visitors as well as the regular members of the Timberlake Christian Church Ringers. You will be hearing more from them in the future. Now receive the blessing of God as you depart this service. Know that God goes with you. No matter whether you're down or up, whether you're feeling good or feeling bad, God is there with you. God will rescue you, God will set you back on your feet, and God will send you forth to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. Let us go to declare good news, that God is here, and that God loves us all. Amen.